And so number six from the 2011 higher. What have we got here? We've got trigonometrical expressions. Oh, when you see this part, you should be thinking wave function. You've got the same angle. It doesn't matter that they're both x's. It just matters that they're both the same. This could equally well be done with them both being two x's. It wouldn't make it a double angle one. You've got a wave function. And in the second part, you've got, even worse, an integral then of a trigonometrical expression. And that's worth a lot more. That's seven. First bit. The wave function. Find the values of R and A. Notice it's all in radians. There's no degree signs present anywhere. That's confirmed over here anyway. 2 pi, not 360. Well, the first part would be this. To change these two terms into a single trigonometrical term with a phase angle in it, use the expansion of the expression you're aiming for. I'll just keep the R out of it just now and expand the sine of the sum. So you look at the front, if you don't remember them, and that'll just be the sine of x, the cos of a, plus switch them over, the cos of x and the sine of a. Now, if these two expressions are meant to be the same, then everything you've got on this side must be replicated in this side. So if on this side I've got three lots of sine x, this side should have three lots of sine x. So as far as that sine x is concerned, I've got r times a cos a multiplying it. Remember, cos a is just a number. So that's the number of sine x. I'll just put it in brackets to highlight the fact that that's just the coefficient. Similarly, the number of cos x on this side must be the same as the number of cos x on this side, which would be r sine a times it, which gives you two equations then. So that the r cos a must be the same as 3, because the sine x terms must be the same. So that gives me one equation. r cos a equals 3. And the r sine a, the number of cos x, must be negative 5. The r sine a must equal negative 5. And what you've got are simultaneous equations again. There are two unknowns, so you've got two equations to find those two unknowns. But with these multiplication type equations, it's not just going to be adding or subtracting that does it. The way that you find the r and the a are by doing divisions and squarings. So to find r, you would do this. You've got 1 squared and 2 squared. If you take both equations and square them, you'd have r squared cos squared equals 3 squared. This equation is square it r squared sine squared equals negative 5 squared. Adding them together, you would have r squared times, and then you would have cos squared plus sine squared a equals 3 squared plus negative 5 squared. But you don't normally show that part there. Sine squared and cos squared comes to 1. What you normally do is just jump in straight away with, although well, it should indicate where it came from, r squared is 3 squared plus negative 5 squared. So that's going to be 9 and 25, which is 34. So r is going to be the square root of 34. And just the square root, because it said r is greater than 0, so I'm not going to write plus or minus there. So it's just the square root. To find a, I'll do a division. If I do sine divided by cos, I'll get a tan. So if I do 2 divided by 1, the bottom divided by the top, I would have this. I'd have r sine a equals negative 5 divided by r cos a, which equals 3. But of course the r's are going to cancel out. Not only will the r's cancel out, the sine over the cos becomes a tan, so that you can just write straight away tan a equals negative 5 upon 3, which is what you would usually do. If you want to play safe, you could put sine a over cos a equals negative 5 upon 3, and then tan a equals to it. But normally that part would do. In which case, a is going to be the inverse tan of negative 5 upon 3. But here's where we hit the radians now. You could do this in degrees and change it to radians afterwards, but there's no reason to be scared of radians, because your calculator can go into radian mode. So what I want to do with this is just find the acute angle and I'm going to use my cast diagram to put it into the correct place. So just doing the inverse tan of 5 upon 3. I get 1.0303, so I'll just call that 1.03. Now, it's not a case of, oh, there's two places it could go because the tangent's negative, because I've got the separate parts of the tangent this time. 
Remember, the tangent just follows like a little dog behind the sine and the cosine. That diagram really refers to sine and cosine. The tan just happens to be positive when they're both positive and negative when one, just one of them's negative. So since I've got the two parts of the tan here, I can identify the single quadrant it lies in. The cosine has to be positive, so that means I'll either be in this quadrant or this quadrant. The sine has to be negative, so I'm either going to be in uh, sorry, this quadrant or this quadrant, which means this is where the angle lies. So the angle would lie there, leaving one and a bit radians to the horizontal axis. Remember that horizontal axis would be zero and then all the way around would be two pi, which means that angle is going to be two pi minus 1.03, etc. And you can just put that into your calculator, two pi minus, and I've still got the whole value sitting in answer anyway. So, and that gives me 5.2528 and so on. So what will I call that? Just 5.25 then. Or we'll go one more step, 253, just to give it three decimal places. There we are. That'll be the first bit. Now the second bit, hence find the value of t in this integral, such that the value of the interval, integral comes to three. Seven marks, but it's not actually that bad. And it's obviously related to the first part, but notice those aren't quite the same as the ones you've got there. You notice similarities with the threes and the fives and the signs and the cos. So I wouldn't worry about that yet. I would just go ahead and integrate that and then worry about what I've got. So if I integrate that, we've got the cos came from sine, so that would just be 3 sine x, and it's just a single x, so no dividing by the derivative. Sine, well, that would have been cos would have produced a negative sine, so that must be negative cos. So minus 5 cos of x. Evaluated at 0 and t, and the difference gives you 3. Now you can see that that's the same as the first part. So that what you're going to do in this case then is replace this by that. So that I can make this statement then. Root 34, sine x plus 5.253, evaluated at 0 and t comes to 3. Where will I put the other half of that bracket? Well, I could put it all the way around, or I could just leave that root 34 out, because it's going to appear as a common factor in both of the parts. So I think I'll put it just here then. And then, I could take that root 34, I could either leave it there, because it's going to be a common factor of the two parts, or I could just get it out of the way and divide it now. So I've got this to be worked out twice equals 3 divided by root 34. So I'll have this. Work it out at t. So sine of t plus 5.253. Take away, it evaluated again at 0, minus 0 plus 5.253 would equal 3, Instead of leaving that root 34 multiplying both of them, I'll just take that cross out of the way just now and make it over root 34. I know the final answer is just going to be a decimal because these aren't going to produce anything that's particularly nice. And the other thing is, this is just a number. I could evaluate that and get it out of the road because what I've got now is an equation which might look a bit nasty, but there's only one mention of t and there it is. And when there's only one mention of the variable, it doesn't matter what the equation looks like, whether it's sines or logs or whatever, the way they'll find t is just by digging down to rescue it from under this rubble that's accumulated on top of it. I'll get rid of that value, sine, whatever that comes to. I'll take that over. I'll inverse it. I'll do the inverse sine of it. And then I'll subtract away the 5 and I'll find my t. So what have I got? Get rid of this first. So I've got sine of t plus 5.253 will be this thing, 3 over root 34 plus sine of 5.253. Now, this part, you can just use your calculator. And you get negative 0 0.3428 and so on which means that, get rid of the sign now, so t plus 5.253 is going to be inverse sine of that negative 0.3428 and so on. Or you could have just written inverse sine of this whole thing here and just kept it in brackets and done it in one go. 
I'm going to use my cast diagram in this though to find the two values. I'm doing it in oh, same time cost. I'm doing it in radians. So strictly speaking, that's zero and that's pi. And if I want, that's two pi. So ignoring the sign there, I'm going to find because the cast diagram will take care of this negative. Find the inverse sign of that part, and that gives me. 0.35000035 and loads of zeros, so that's nice and easy. And since the sign is negative, that means it's either in this quadrant or this quadrant. So I've either got it here or here. So I've either got pi plus 0 0.35 or I've got 2 pi minus 0 0.35. So I've got 3.491 etc or one five etc or or five point nine three three one etc and then I have to take this off so the final part would be subtract five from both of those now that's going to go negative but these are just two of the answers a sign goes on and on and on forever you happen to have found two values but by subtracting this, it's brought them way back. That means you could have considered some further values in the next wavelength and so on. So even if this goes negative, by adding on two pi's, you could bring it back into range. So what have we got then? So taking away those numbers, we've got this one, minus 5.253 gives you 0 0.6801. This one, minus 5.253 gives you negative 1.761 and so on then this answer straight away lies between 0 and 2 because it's only 0.67 this one if I added on if I jump to the next wavelength and added on 2 pi now 2 pi would be adding on more than 6 so it's going to take your answer to well over 2 which means the only answer to this question is t equals 6.680 since t had to be between 2 or from 2 to 0. There. That was question 6. Now that was a bit lazy. It was really just because I'd run out of space at the bottom there. I should really have continued to change negative 1.7615 by adding on 2 pi to get the next corresponding angle to it, which is 4.52. And it's because that angle, 4.52, is greater than 2 that it's not included in the results. Not because it was negative 1.7 to begin with and less than 0.